Hi everyone, Lynn from Covey Central. This is Gouda. Gouda and her buddy have come in for a little health check. And one of the questions is how to know if your guinea pig has fungal or mites. And let's, let's go into this a little bit. So the first thing with fungal and mites is that their coats are never soft. Uh -huh. So um, their coats start to show and feel a little bit hard, a little bit brittle. And a lot of that is to do with um, hair fibres that might be breaking off or falling out or some of what we would feel if there was an issue. Um, in the early, early signs of trying to locate or check your guinea pig for mites and fungal, you're looking for things like dandruff, uh, for skin, that, for hair that comes away that might have skin as a part of that. So if we just look at some of these here, let's, let's do this. The hair comes out really easily and you can see up close there, the hair is actually clear. There's no chunks of skin coming out. And I can feel Gouda's coat is really beautiful. It's got nice glossiness to it, which is great. Um, guinea pigs do naturally <coughs> scratch. So there's a little bit of that goes on, a little bit like what we would do. But where we start to find problems that the coat is always the first thing to indicate a problem so what I'm doing now is just looking at her coat very carefully to see right down to the root level if there's anything that is causing a problem and she's an Abyssinian so her coat swirls in all directions which means we get a good look in at some locations where the hair is flatter and in other areas like here it's a bit more tricky to see through but again when their coat is coming out because all guinea pigs lose their hair we look at the skin and it's that now that see that little clunk there has got a little bit of skin at the end of it can mm -hmm. you see that one yeah maybe you can see that in the light there it's got tiniest bit Make of skin shadow. yeah yeah so that's the sort of thing we're looking for when you say they've just started to do a little bit of scratching, it could be at the very early stages that we've got some fungal or mites on board. So again, here's another one. It's a shadow. And you can see, can you get that in there? Yeah. yeah, it's got skin at the end. It's like a little clump. So I would recommend that you treat them for mites, which just protects them in the event that it's just starting and also give them a fungal wash which will eradicate any fungal that's in the coat mm -hmm. now the reason i say both is that we typically find they go together it's really <laughs> common that if a guinea pig has mites it also has a fungal condition um, so to treat for both just eradicates that it doesn't harm the guinea pig but it certainly will ensure that you've covered both of those options so if you're never sure about it always do both so in this particular girl, we do have some white flaky skin, which is showing you can probably get a close up of it here. Have a look, Paul. Yeah, it's just in through here. See how her skin's a little bit more obvious, but there's white flaky skin showing. If we go down a bit further there, yeah. you can just see it sitting in the coat. Let's see, all around here. Where I'm agitating, it's starting to to come out. Yeah. Let's take a closer look at you in other ways. Let's just do a check all over. What I'm doing is just feeling for any lumps and bumps. Anything that could be... I know. <laughs> do you want to take over the filming, Paul? Yeah. Hang on, that'll do. Now her lymph nodes are a little bit more elevated than than normal so up through here we have some lumps that are very palpable so you can probably just see that on the camera there's a lump there so when I go under her armpits and back those lumps are very evident um, and that can be first sign that something is going on now if you look underneath her tummy right here in the center you see we've got some little naked areas there. Uh, so, that's this way to come up. Yeah. 
Was she hiding away at all? Yeah. Uh, changing her behaviour? I haven't really noticed. So, sometimes like she's really calm and then like she gets really like, I don't know, like angry. Yeah. Not angry but like she anxious. Like, put anxious. me down. I like noticed when, yesterday when Cheddar was eating something, I put some greens in there thing. She was just hiding under the little blankie. Yeah, I think definitely treat for mites. You can see in around here, she's got shorter fur where she's been scratching. That's <coughs> you do see them scratch sometimes. So. Yeah. yeah, so I would. It's, look, if there's anything there, it's very early, and mm. their immunity can also um, overcome that. But if for example, we had lots of rain just 10 days ago. Mm. And if they're in an environment where it's become a bit damp or a little bit wetter mm. or cage hasn't been cleaned or something like that, um, <clears throat> it can enable mites or fungal just to flare enough so that they get annoyed. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it becomes a problem. I'm just gonna do her ears for her. <clears throat> Yeah. Noticed her sister kind of chewing on her ears. Yeah. Like having a little. Okay. Like someone sometimes like biting. I couldn't yeah. work out if it was <coughs> just aggressive or if it was just grooming. Well, well they do fight. They just, you know. The, the reason I'm doing her ears is this because it's a bit like Harry's. If we don't clean them out, they're a bit yucky. But um, because it's nice and damp and moist mm. in around the ear folds, it's mm. a perfect spot for fungal to, to harbour, as well as mites. Um, mites are microscopic and they, they're not something we can see, but we know, for example, psychoptic mange mites, when we get outbreaks, it's more under the jawline between the, the arms, um, moist areas around the head and neck. And uh, for that reason, uh, it's it's a good thing to, to just wipe that out. Uh, what's in here is a tiny bit of maliseb and water. So a lot of water, tiny, tiny bit of maliseb. And the reason the maliseb is in there is that if there is any fungal spores lurking around those ear flaps, that um, we're just going to eradicate that. So is that what we should use? For yeah, the, this is maliseb here. Wash. It's an antifungal wash, uh -huh. and it's great for giving them a bath as well, just to have that run through the coat. Um, and to prevent any so prevent how often issues. should we do that? Oh, preventative. really only if you were a bit suspicious. So in this yeah, instance, I think you're supposed to wash them. And just, yeah. No, that's right. So they, they actually don't like baths, but... Um, <laughs> too, too bad, because they'd be great fun in the bath, wouldn't they? <laughs> no, they well, no, it's very risky for them to breathe it in and aspirate, which means they'll, they'll die, which is an awful thing. Uh, their little mouth and nose is very close to the surface, so ground surface. And accidents can happen too easily. You're shuffling around in there, aren't you? Yeah. Should we do these nails while we've got you? Oh my god. <laughs> Would you like that? Okay. Do you want to do filming? Yeah, that's it. 